Okay, so, so what I'm going to do now is, is really just um, kind of finish the case study uh, and talk about some of the learnings that we had with that Cloudflare example. So I'm going to first talk about the problem solution fit stage and really look at you know, those three areas. And the questions we're asking there is in the problem area is how do customers rank these top problems? How do customers solve the problems today? And then it, it, on the, from a customer risk perspective, is this a viable customer segment to, 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 uh, to start with? And I'm going to, use, I'm going to continue on with that parent example. So this is what the canvas looked like. And so these were the top three problems. These were the existing alternatives. And those were the customer segment, the parents, parent segment. And so we went out and we did these problem interviews. You know, we created falsifiable hypotheses first, which is the first step. And, and the way that we, we did that is here we, we identified what the must-have problem would be. I didn't kind of list it out specifically. Actually, it, it is the sharing of lots of media. We thought that would be the, the must-have problem, that sharing lots of content was, was, was inherently painful and people would be willing to pay to solve that problem. Um, we also thought that the existing list that I had there, the Flickr Pro Smug Mug, would be a representative list of what the alternatives were, and that's what we would base our pricing on, so we had to go test that. And then finally, we wanted to test whether the parents' market in general was interesting enough. Like, did they, did they have a must-have problem, and was there enough of a price point that we could build a business around? So we had to kind of validate that. So here's what a, a typical problem interview looks like. I'm not going to really drill into this a whole lot because we're running not, not, too, not too much on time, and the book kind of has a lot of detail on this. It really has like full scripts on how you can go and run these interviews and what you ask and how you test for it. I will say that um, there's, I've already covered a lot of this just, just before. Um, what we want to definitely do is collect things like demographics. That way we help to identify who, who it is we are talking to. So if we get a, a unusually positive reaction, we know that it was this kind of a customer versus another kind. We also want to test the problem ranking, but more importantly, spend a lot of time talking about their, their worldview and, and learning in that problem interview. How do they really solve these problems today? And so using this interview script, um, this is some of the learning we, we got from the, from the Cloudfire segment. So we had this sharing lots of media being the must-have problem. What we ended up from the interviews after talking to 10 or 15 moms is we could draw a picture, which is very small, to, it's very small and not very, hard, not very easy to read. But it really was a workflow. Like these moms would like sit with us, or these parents at this point would sit with us, and like spend 30 minutes just talking about what would happen from when they they got pictures on their camera to when they got shared. And along the way, they would express frustration. They would talk about parts of the process that they liked, that they didn't like. And I will say that one thing that kind of repeatedly came up was more than sharing was not so much the the difficulty around sharing because a lot of people felt that was a hard problem, but they were kind of mitigating it by not sharing as much or, you know, or, or, or not doing video, for example. But the harder problem that they had was more around backups. They were very terrified that all their photos would magically disappear because their hard drive would crash. And they had no way. Like backups is one of those things that everyone should be doing but doesn't, doesn't spend enough time doing. So that was one of the problems that we heard uh, quite a bit. And it was, it was, it was part of this, this diagram we drew. So this, was a, this is an example of how you can take that interview and just draw a flowchart. We did a similar thing with the photographers we talked to, and it was a much more complicated flowchart that we had. It was an hour-long conversation on all the steps they, take, that, that they, they took to make those photos kind of ready to be delivered to the client. But along the way, we uncovered kind of these problems. All these red, all these red areas are pain points that they helped us identify that were not even on our, on our original list. And then we explored further and tried to see if those pain points were higher ranking or lower ranking than the ones we thought we were going to build. And that's a way of prioritizing the problems that you're really going after. And then going back and, of course, seeing if you can, if that is in your vision. Because there may be a pain point that comes out here that's a completely different product that you didn't envision building, or it's impossible to build because of technical feasibility issues, because everyone would like you know, things to magically happen. But the reality is that maybe it's just too hard to do. So you have to still balance that. But this is a way of understanding that customer worldview. On the existing alternatives, this is what we thought we would see. Um, we knew Facebook would not be very high on the ranking. We thought most, most of the traffic would be going to people like SmugMug and Flickr. Um, smaller percentage on MobileMe because it's a more premium service. It's an Apple-based product. Not many people have Apples. And what we actually found out was, was the Pac-Man effect, is that most people surprisingly were using email. They weren't even using any of these services out there. And when we asked them why, it, it basically came out um, what, what we learned repeatedly was it was ease of use, and many times not so much for the parents, 
but for the grandparents. Um, many of them did not know how to navigate through these sites. Facebook was like a complete mess for them. They didn't know how to like really in those days how to get through and like find the photos and just with all the noise that's around there. So what we found is that it, it, so it was not really um, these people we were going after, but we were going after email. And that's an example of where you know, it, it's very easy to build a business plan, business model, and say this is our competition. But our real competition was a free alternative. It was not any of these paid services, which, which was kind of, in some ways, good and bad news. It was, it, was, it was bad news for us because that is a free alternative. We had to provide value that was way more compelling uh, that could, where we could justify charging for. Um, the good news of it, though, is that email had its, had its limitations. People couldn't send a lot of photos out there. They wanted to, and they were forced to send you know, a handful of pictures at a time. And many of them wanted to be able to have the, the receiving end print them, so they were sending them in full high res, and it was kind of a big, it was kind of a, a very difficult way to send the pictures, but it was the easiest interface for them. And so that's what we learned from these interview processes. And then the other thing, as far as the, the viable customer segment, that was one that, you know, given the numbers and, and even, even despite the, the little setback with the email, we felt that, that our solution would still provide enough value that we could justify charging, and we had to test that. So it, it was still permission for us to keep, keep moving forward. 